when we talk about basic hand calculations for stress, we look at examples of uniform stress or constant stress gradients that we get in bending beams or in uh, torsional bars. And these calculations work pretty well in those cases, but there are also situations where the geometry is a little more complex. Say we have a hole in the middle of a bar or the, there's a change in diameter or thickness. And these things will affect the stress um, in, uh, in significant ways. And while we could use finite element analysis to find these values, we often find it much quicker to be able to use a quick approximation relying on uh, a fact, something we're going to term a stress concentration factor. And this will allow you to do quick iterations and spreadsheets, other ways to estimate the stresses and, and uh, find a close solution before you go to the work of building a finite element model. Now, one way to think about that is that stress flows through an object. Uh, if we start up here at the top of this bar, the stress is fairly uniform, as evidenced by those lines. Uh, and it's continuing down, but as it gets to these holes, the spots in the middle need to go around those holes, which create, much like flow changes around a uh, disruption, it creates higher stresses. Seen here is red illustrations in this finite element analysis. And what we're looking for is a way of estimating those. And so there's, uh, through combinations of experimental testing and finite element analysis, for many geometries, there's been a stress concentration factor, uh, usually termed case of T, that has been identified. And it's just the ratio between this peak stress, sigma max, versus a nominal stress, which would be the value uh, that would happen without the stress concentration factor. So in here, if I just took the area on either side of that and took an average axial stress, I would get sigma nominal. Uh, and the case of T accounts for how much higher than that it is. So by taking tabulated values or curve fits to these values, then we can make a quick calculation or estimation of what sigma max is. Now, so to use this, first step is find the nominal stress. Normally, we're going to use some kind of reduced dimension. So emphasize that that's with a, a reduced dimension here. And then we will uh, go to a table to find the stress concentration factor. The most common place you're going to look is in the appendix of your textbook. Though there are entire books, such as Works Foremost for Stress and Strain, that have a significant number of those. And then you could take that value and you could find the maximum uh, by, uh, by multiplying the nominal times case of t to get a sigma max. So for example, for a bar axial bar, I list some dimensions here um, on the left. Uh, we could find the nominal stress um, as the force divided by the width minus the diameter. So we're, we're not including the center hole there times the thickness. We find that that would be about 3.17 megapascals. So if we do the Typically, we have some one or more non-dimensional factors based on the geometry. So you'd calculate that. In this case, d over w of 0 0.3. We come up and read off that line, and we'd eyeball that. So that's about 2.35. And then we could multiply that, those two together, and we find it's about 7.5 megapascals uh, for the max stress. Now, each geometry is going to have its own table, its own factors. And the information you need is on the chart. In particular, make sure you look at the definition of sigma nominal. When you're going through these, you want to make sure that you match both the geometry and the loading. So for example, we have this bar with a hole in it. It could be loaded with a force, or it could have a bending moment. Right? And the charts would be different, the different values of stress concentration for each of those. Similarly, we could have this other geometry with notches on the sides uh, that could be loaded differently. Now, there are, generally, it's obvious that we could reduce stress concentration by using larger radii. 
uh, though there are places where that's really not possible. Here's an example where we have a shaft and then we have to put a bearing up there. We want that bearing to sit right up against the sharp edge of the shaft. Now, we're going to have a high stress concentration there if we have to use a sharp corner. So I can make that sit up there well by relieving the corner on, on, that, on the front, on the axial face there, um, or I could come in radially behind that, um, or I could make use of a second washer there. Um, there are a variety of ways of helping to reduce the effect of the stress concentration. Um, but in general, uh, you want to be aware of this so you could use this tool as it's much faster than using finite element analysis. Uh, and typically, it'll get you to close enough, uh, you know, 10%, uh, maybe 5% on the stress levels. One of your first um, labs will be to test the connection between these and to see how accurate you could get.